Good Sunday morning to all of you, our friends and family at First Assembly of God Church here in Union City, Tennessee. I want to just take a moment to bless you, uh, welcome you to this morning's video cast. Pray that the blessings of the Lord are over you and over your home, that you are safe, that you are well, and we just pray that over you. And uh, this morning we have come with a message from the Lord for the church uh, as we are going through this new season, as I shared last Sunday. Uh, but just want to welcome everyone and uh, just uh, invite you to go ahead and grab your Bibles and prepare to hear the word. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12 is actually where we're going to be looking uh, this morning for the message from the Lord. Uh, so just grab your Bibles and let's get ready to uh, hear the word of God. morning, looking at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26 through verses 29. Be careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one who is speaking. For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the earthly messenger, we will certainly not escape if we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven. 
When God spoke from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth. But now he makes another promise. Once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. This means all of creation will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things will remain. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. For our God is a devouring fire. One translation says a consuming fire. But the phrase only unshakable things will remain is the portion of this scripture reading that God has really stirred my spirit with. I have entitled this morning's message, Slumbering Church Awakening. And the reason being is because that's what I feel uh, that we are witnessing today. It is as if this pandemic has sort of stirred the church, uh, shaken, if you will, the church, a slumbering church. Now, many of you who are regulars to Facebook have no doubt read this prophecy that I'm going to read this morning from David Wilkerson from 1986, um, in which he offered a prophetic word during a church service under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He offered this prophecy and, and I quote, I see a plague coming on the world and the bars and churches and government will shut down. The plague will hit New York City and shake it like it has never been shaken. The plague is going to force prayerless believers into radical prayer and into their Bibles. And repentance will be the cry from the man of God in the pulpit. And out of it will come a third great awakening that will sweep America and the world, end quote. Now, that was a prophecy that David Wilkerson spoke back in 1986. Now, here we are 34 years later, and we have truly witnessed a shaking uh, that has, as was prophesied. We have witnessed timeless traditions and institutions shut down for the first time in our lifetime, just as prophesied. New York City has been hit the hardest as a result of this recent pandemic, just as was prophesied. But what about the rest of the prophecy? Will this pandemic force prayerless believers into radical prayer? Will it force them into their Bibles? Will repentance be the cry of the man of God from the pulpit? And will this usher in the third great awakening as was prophesied? I suppose time will tell, but there are some things that all of this should awaken in all of us. It could be said that all of this that we have been going through is a dress rehearsal for something more that could be coming down the road. It could be that this is just the beginning of a series of waves or birth pains, as Jesus called them, or shaking, as Haggai the prophet spoke of, as well as the Hebrew writer here in our text. It could be that it will take more than a simple virus to bring prayerless believers to radical prayer and into their Bibles. It could be that the playbook for future pandemics or disasters is being written through all of this. Regardless of what you think about the prophecy or regardless of what you think may be coming down the road as part of a future event or future birth pain, all of this has truly been a wake-up call, in my opinion, for the slumbering church. Now, let me give you a few nuggets that the Lord really dropped into my spirit as I uh, just listened to him during a time of prayer a few days ago. 
First of all, this pandemic has awakened us to the reality of just how small our world really is. When you stop and think about it, it's hard to imagine that a little tiny virus that originated in China has spread throughout the entire globe, infecting millions of people and simultaneously shutting down the world economy. It just boggles the mind to think of how something that uh, started on the other side of our planet has affected us in our little small small rural areas. Um, it's just hard to, to think about that. And to see how our world is really small helps make us realize something very important as well. This pandemic has awakened us to the reality of just how quickly life can change. It's hard to believe that just a few short months ago, the headlines were centered around the impeachment hearings about the Super Bowl and the Tennessee Titans in the Super Bowl. Uh, it was centered around the presidential primaries. Uh, one of the headlines right before all of this hit was Nashville being hit by a series of tornadoes. Uh, and then suddenly the bottom fell out of it. Suddenly, uh, sporting events were canceled. Major League Baseball season canceled. Basketball seasons, the March Madness canceled. We watched governors begin issuing stay-at-home orders, and here we are, six weeks later, trying to grasp for, for some sense of normality. And I would say that this event has shown us just how quickly life can change. It has certainly opened my eyes and, uh, to just how quickly our world can be shaken, and it has opened my eyes, my understanding of just how quickly the events that are spoken of in Revelation chapter 6, how quickly that could affect the world that we are living in. And it has shown me just how quickly everything could be upended. The third thing is this pandemic has awakened us to the reality of how important our personal relationship with Christ really is. We've always been accustomed to being able to talk face to face with our friends, we've gotten used to, in my opinion, the high level of discipleship and biblical instruction from the spiritual leaders in our lives. And then almost overnight, we have been sequestered away into our homes. And uh, for some, it has not been as bad as others because some of us have a network of friends and family that we can talk to, but for many others, they have no one. Unless someone calls and checks in on them, they do not have anyone to really talk to. And it's in times like this that you really learn how important your relationship with the Lord really is. Because when everything around you is shaken and nothing can be counted on except the Lord, it really shows you how important your relationship with him is. The scripture says he's a friend that will stick closer than a brother. It's in times like this that the communion of the Holy Spirit becomes so important in our lives. The peace of God only comes through our relationship with the Lord. True purpose, uh, destiny, uh, realization of what this life is really all about only comes through Jesus Christ and that relationship. And in direct relation to that, this pandemic has awakened us to the reality of just how dependent we really are on God. That dependence on God comes through trusting Him and recognizing He is the only one that we can have certainty about. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was asked in an interview recently of what his answer was to the Israelis in regards to moving forward past this pandemic. And he said this, and I quote, we have to deal with COVID-19 in the best way possible and trust the doctors and researchers. But that is not the first answer. The first answer is the spiritual one. We must trust in God. Rabbi Aaron Moss 
the rabbi of a community in Sydney, Australia, was asked the following question in regard to all of this. And the, the interviewer said, this coronavirus thing has really thrown me. I feel like I've lost all sense of certainty. No one knows what will happen next. How do we stay sane when we don't know what is lurking around the corner? And his response was this, and I quote, this tiny virus of 125 nanometers has sent the entire world into chaos. All of our plans are up in the air. Markets are going crazy. Entire countries shutting down. And we have no clue what the future holds. But that is always the case, he said. We never know what the future holds. We only think we do. And we keep getting surprised when things don't pan out the way we expected. He goes on to say, we have to admit our vulnerability. He said, keep calm. Panic and fear are also contagious. He says, take every precaution as advised by health authorities. Wash your hands well. And every time you do, remember whose hands you are in. Now, when everything is stripped away, when everything has been shaken that can be shaken and the thing that is left standing is God. And that brings me to the final thought about this pandemic. This pandemic has awakened us to the reality of just how big God really is. Our God is the creator of the universe. God has blessed us with medical scientific breakthroughs. He has blessed us with uh, advanced medical treatments and doctors and nurses and experts in the field of medicine. But ultimately, God is the God who is in control of the universe. God is the only one we can place our trust in. When everything that can be shaken has been shaken, the only thing that will ever be left standing is the kingdom of God. And that the Hebrew writer said, can never be shaken. Our God is omnipotent. Our God is omnipresent. Our God is omniscient, which means he is all powerful. He is all present. He is all knowing. Isaiah 55 verse eight. I want you to hear this. This is uh, the words of God through the prophet Isaiah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. As the song says, he is unchangeable. He is unsearchable. He is unstoppable. That's what you are, God. He is the God who spoke the universe into existence. He is the one who strung the planets out and hung them onto nothing. He is God who spoke to Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this who questions my wisdom with arrogant words? Now, closing with a portion of this morning's text from Hebrew chapter 12, verse 27. This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things will remain. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. For our God is a devouring fire. With all of this shaking, the thing that I keep coming back to is that when everything is shaken that can be shaken, the only thing that will be left standing is God the only constant that we can truly trust in. So I asked the question this morning, as you have listened to this message, as it relates to the shaking, the slumbering church awakening, what is all of this shaking awakening in you? I trust it is these truths that uh, our, our world is really small and we truly are dependent upon our relationship with the Lord. We truly are dependent on God and we, we've learned how big God is and how small our world really is. I pray that these truths are awakening in you 
as all of the things that we used to look to as timeless constants are being shaken. Let me pray with you. Father, I pray over every person that is watching this video cast. Lord, I know that, that we are all going through this together and there is certainly a shaking that is taking place in our world today that is literally touching every part of the planet. And in the midst of all of this, we are reminded of just how big you are, just what your word says about all of these things that will be shaken. And God, I just pray that as people are listening to this message, that they would, would feel uh, just a resolve rise up within them that says, I am gonna trust in God and God alone. He is God and God alone. I will put my trust in him. I will follow the guidelines of, of our national leaders and I will do everything, be wise as a serpent, innocent as a dove, as they say. But God, I'm ultimately gonna trust in you. You are the one that I am placing all of my trust in. Thank you for the wisdom of those around us. Thank you, God, for the medical breakthroughs. Thank you for all of these things. But God, ultimately, I am trusting in you. When everything around me is shaking, the one thing I know that cannot be shaken is you, Almighty God. And I turn to you and I trust you and I call upon you today. Give me peace. Give me strength. Give me the, the power and the ability to go through this and walk out on the other side in victory. I pray in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, just leave us a, a note, a, a link um, on the bottom of this um, YouTube site and just let somebody know the, just what God has spoken to you personally. Be blessed, my friend, in Jesus' name.